Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Dan McGee. Welcome to the garage. So today I thought I'd um, talk about cutting angles on a table saw. So you might say, well that's weird. Why don't you just use a um a miter saw miter saws are a lot quicker and they're more accurate and my answer to that is if you're cutting trim which is only you know maybe four inches wide it's the miter saw is the way to go but say you got a piece of trim that is that big. So let's see how big that is. So that is six and a quarter inches wide. Okay, can't see it, trust me, six and a quarter. Now <clears throat> I put this on my cutoff saw, miter saw, and it didn't cut all the way through. Bummer! Let's measure the most this saw will cut. So this saw will cut from here to here about eight inches. So if this piece was Five and a half inches instead of six and a quarter, it would cut no problem. But um, I know you might be thinking, well, Dan, that's a cheap saw. Why don't you buy one of those slider saws? You know, the kind you put on there and you could, you, it runs on these really um, shiny rails and you go down with it and it comes out well that's not a bad idea but I don't have one and I don't really want to buy one because they're anywhere from 400 to 700 dollars depending on what you buy and I really don't cut a really big trim so anyhow I lost track of where I was at. Table saw. Let's cut a 45 on a table saw. So we have these, which is a miter gauge. In case you've never seen one before a miter gauge runs in the slots of a table saw like so and you put this on an angle and you put the board right like that can you see that and then you go whoa look at that it's a perfect 45 uh no it's not these work okay, but um, they allow for a lot of uh, human error. So when you're running that through, if it's not a good table saw, um, the clearance in here between the miter gauge is sloppy. So even if it's off a, you know, a 32nd of an inch, a 32nd of an inch on a small piece, like so, like a thin piece, I keep giving you the ugly side. Um, like here would be nothing, but multiply that by you know, if you cut a say a 16 inch piece, that's going to molt. I don't know what the you know, the actual measurement is. Um, you mathematicians, you can figure that out, but here's what I know it's going to be a lot, it's going to be way off. So, 
So I came up with an idea. Well, I kind of stole a bunch of ideas from my fellow YouTubers. They're awesome. So I made a um, table saw sled. So this has a, um, this table saw was made in the, I think the either the mid to late 50s, could be early 60s. So it's old. It's, it's probably older than I am. Whoa. So this saw came with a miter gauge. Look at that. Cool, right? Well, let me show you something on the miter gauge. So miter gauges, again, when you put them in a slot and you're on, you see it's even, and you're running it through, you've got that scrape, uh, the resistance from the table saw. So when you're trying to line that thing up, it's going to move a little, it's going to want to move. And the more you get, the more you move, the more you run it through, the more movement you get. So you're not going to get a really good cut on it. So, uh-oh, a lot of noise. Can you see this down here? That's the actual miter gauge. And this came with a, uh, this one's a really good one, by the way. This has a T-slot, which fits into the T-slot on here. So I can pull this thing out, and it doesn't fall off. Is that cool or what? So I'm just talking to the air. Let's move it up a little bit so I can talk to you, you awesome people. There we go. Look at it there. Oh, man. Okay. So my dilemma is I want to do a 45, but I want to do it in a piece big like this. So what I came up with was what they call the sled. And this is connected to my miter gauge. So my miter gauge doesn't really go on angles anymore. I don't really want it to because it's not as accurate as my setup. So I want to do a 45. So I marked my board. Here, you know what? I'm going to switch cameras so you can zoom in. Ooh, look at that. I'm all hands now, baby. Woo! Okay, so... I want to do a 45. So I've got these hold downs that are adjustable. And I got the lines that I drew for a 45 and tested, by the way. So now I crank these babies down and it holds this 
It's kind of a fence. We'll call it a fence. A fence within a fence within that was built on a sled. Okay, so now I want to do a 45 on this piece. So I've got these things that are hold downs and that holds this piece in place. Ta-da! Look baby, no hands, no hands. I got all these hands and I don't even need them. So I'm going to keep my hands far away from the blade. I might do maybe just give it a little pressure here, but again, that's far away from the blade. All right, so I'm going to turn on this 70 year old saw. That's the air system, by the way, the vacuum system. Here's the saw. Are you ready? So the motor on this saw is about five horsepower and originally it came with a, let me switch cameras, originally it came with a uh, five horsepower but it was three phase because the saw came out of a um, um, A mill shop where they made doors and trim and stuff like that. So it was a it's a production saw, and it's made by uh, Delta Rockwell, Rockwell Delta. And it's got a lot of miles on it. I've had it since probably nineteen. 1980 maybe sounds about right I got it from a good friend of mine who used to work at this uh, this mill shop uh, Jim Paz the famous Paz um, I got it from him and I've had it ever since so let's see how accurate my table saw was Oh, look at that. Pretty good, huh? 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 Nice. Okay, so you could have probably done this one on one of those slider saws. So, what's the big deal, Dan? It's only six and a quarter inches. Now, I don't have a piece this big, but I'm going to show you. I could cut a 45 degree angle on a 30 inch piece. Nice. All right, so the most common uh, d um, miters you get are 45s and 30s, but um, I can do any of them on here. I just would just would have to draw the lines and um, set it. But it's um, 
this is really nice for doing um, multiples of things too. So say I wanted to do just some 90 degree cuts. So I'm just going to crank these babies down because I don't need them. But now I've got a stop right here. Here, let me go back to the other camera. Ta-da! Here's my hands again. Okay, so this is a stop. Okay, I flip that up. I can put this board anywhere I want. Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. Now I put that down, and it it's so weird. It actually stopped on the stop. Whoa, mind-blowing. Okay. So now, see, I say I needed a hundred pieces this big. I'm doing a, some cabinets, and I need um, hundred twelve inch pieces for uh, rails for the, for a cabinet. So I have the stop set up now, so I can put the pieces in here and. Say they're long. I can cut it off to, um, I can rough cut them to like 13, 12 and a half inches, we'll say. And then put this down. And now I'm going to cut every one of these to 12. And they're going to come out perfect. They're going to come out better than on the chop saw. The chop saw, ha chop saw has a lot more uh, movement in it than a precision table saw. So, anyhow, um, that's about all I wanted to do was go over um, doing miter gauge, doing miter cuts on a table saw versus a, um, a chop saw, so or a miter gauge saw or whatever, whatever, whatever you guys want to call it. I don't care what you call it. All right. Cheers to y'all. Talk to you later.